you might already know that your AV receiver has got things to do with the sound as well as video. And that is why we call it as AV receiver, the audio video receiver. But inside this box, there are some powerful settings, which people are either misunderstood about or they ignore it. But in my today's video, I am going to run you through five hidden settings of your AV receiver, which is going to change the entire setup for you. It is going to either sound cleaner, smarter, and definitely more enjoyable. So let's begin. Now the AV receiver on which we have applied the settings to share the video with all of you is on a Marans Cinema 40 AV receiver model. Now while the Denon and Marans share the same setup menu, in case you have got a different brand, different model AV receiver, you may have to find out the relevant settings which are applicable in your own setup menu. If this is very very clear to you, let us begin with the first setting. Now most of the AV receivers have got a standard installation procedure. You do all the connections at the rear of the AV receiver and in the front, you connect your mic which is provided in the box. You keep this mic at your listening position and let that mic do its own job. Now this job is nothing but the auto calibration of your AV receiver. Now based upon the brand, you will have its own calibration software. In this case, since we are using a Maran Cinema 40, we have got the Odyssey calibration standard procedure being used. Now when I put the mic, the curves of the speakers are auto calibrated by this Odyssey software. So the first setting that I need to do is go into the audio setup menu and inside this I am going to see something called as multi EQ XT32. Now this is nothing but the 32 reference points that have been used by the Odyssey to calibrate my entire speakers with the sitting position. Now when I go inside this I have got four options. The first is obviously off where I can turn it off. If I turn it off, it means that all the settings that the Odyssey has performed will not be applicable for any output. So ideally they should be applicable. That is the purpose of doing this calibration. The second option is reference. The third is LR bypass. LR bypass means the front left right channels will be bypassed from the calibration. They will be used the way they are. The fourth is flat. Now flat is good for small rooms where the listening position is very near but the ones that we typically recommend is to keep it on the second option which is the reference option. Now when you go inside this reference you will find some more options below. The first one is dynamic EQ. So in this dynamic EQ mode you will have two options. You can either turn on the dynamic EQ or you can turn off the dynamic EQ. The best choice is always to keep it on and inside this on you will have two selections. One is the reference level offset. And the second one is the surround level compensation. The reference level offset should always be set to zero. And when you do the surround level compensation, it means that if you're not getting your surrounds the way they are supposed to be, then you can increase them. Otherwise, keep them to light. So you've got three options, light, medium, heavy, and then obviously off. So light is good for 3 dB increase in the surround and the rear channels. If you keep it to medium, it's going to increase by 5 to 6 dBs. And when you keep it too heavy, it is almost going to increase 9 dB of sound for your surround and rear channels. Now, the most advantageous settings that has worked for us and we believe can work for you is keeping the multi EQ XT 32 to reference, to turn on the dynamic EQ and to keep the reference level offset at 0 dB. If this is very, very clear to you, let us look at the second hidden settings. Now the second hidden setting is again in that same audio setup menu. In this you will find an option called surround parameter. Now inside the surround parameter you will have cinema EQ on and off. Now if your speakers are giving you a little ear fatigue, the best choice is to keep the cinema EQ on. In case they are very well calibrated and you don't want to play around with the settings, then please turn them off. So when you turn it off, then you're relying completely on the Odyssey's calibration software to give you the best output from the home theater. So Cinema EQ on only if your speakers are giving very harsh treble, otherwise off is the preferred choice. Now the third hidden setting is one of the most effective settings because I honestly don't like to see the volume bar when I'm watching a movie. I know you have to use the remote control to increase or decrease the volume at times, but it is very annoying to see that sound moving across on the screen, right? You don't want to tell everybody what volume levels you are on. Plus most of the people have this impression, 
oh you are taking the sound at 60 db or 65% it's not percent it is db level so i personally feel that you should always turn it off if you don't want to have any disturbance on the on screen display especially while watching a nice movie now to do this you have to go into the setup menu in this case we went into the setup menu of the av receivers that is maran cinema 40 we went into the video part and in the video there was an option called as on screen display in this go into the volume bar and over here you will find three options top bottom and off off is what you would select so that you don't get to see what is the volume and how can you keep on playing around that slider on the screen now over here some people would have a doubt hey then my i agree that that volume bar is pretty irritating but how would i know what exactly is the volume level especially if the av receiver is hidden inside a cabinet and you don't have the access to that cabinet well in such cases just press the info button while you are watching something and on the left hand side of that info menu you will see on screen what is the volume level this is the best way to understand the volume levels but apart from that it is always better to turn the volume off when you don't want that slider on the screen now before we move on to the last and the final two settings if you are getting value from this video then i would highly encourage you guys to please subscribe to our channel with the bell notifications turned on so that we can bring in more such valuable information about home cinema systems and their configuration in the indian market so that small contribution will really help us at tap av moving on to the fourth hidden setting now this fourth hidden setting is all about controlling the av receiver with a voice assistant device now modern times we all need solutions where we have alexas and googles in our homes and we want the av receiver to be operated with the help of alexa for instance a simple command like hey alexa play a movie in my theater room well now this command can be customized i can have a maybe an apple tv turn on get the netflix on on the av receiver and with the av receiver's hdmi cc i can have the entire home theater turned on now all of this fanciness can come with a simple network control on setting now this setting can be turned on when you go into the network section of your setup menu and inside this you will see an option called network control you have to ensure that you keep it always on now what do i mean by always on of the network control let's say after watching a movie you have turned off your entire home theater setup and it is on a standby mode which typically everybody has right the red light which is permanently there now this is a standby mode but when i pass on a command to an alexa and alexa has to trigger an action your av receiver still has to be in the network so that it can get that command and that is what we are turning on with this always on as the feature in the network control now once we have it you go into the alexa app you give the skills learning of hios account and that hios account will get you all your controls of your av receiver on alexa so it's a little longer process first is this network setting second is to go into the hios account link your av receiver with the hios third is to go into the alexa app get the skills access to the hios account and then and then only you will be able to control all of this now i know this is a longer procedure and some people would have problems with it if you need any assistance i would highly recommend you to check our virtual calibration service which literally covers each and every aspect of your av receiver and your entire home theater so explore that service and see how you can use it for your own benefit moving on to the last and the final setting now this is where you have the smartest control of your entire home theater setup this is called the smart select now this smart select gives you an option of not playing around with the remotes not using the multiple input sources you just have smart select one where i can have a let's say ott control the second is probably a tata sky input the third smart select is where i can have my playstation control and the fourth is where i can have a different setting or a different output menu now how does all of this work if you go into the general setup menu you will find something mentioned as smart select when you go inside this you will have a list of things that you can give an access to in the smart select mode it can be the presets that you have saved it can be the video settings it can be the audio settings it can be the calibration settings it can be literally any and everything about your av receiver once you have done your enable disable to all of these in individual inputs 
simply turn on something press take the remote control in hand at the bottom you will see four buttons super select one or smart select one two three four simply hold on that button for three or five seconds and now this button has got this particular entire configuration assigned to the moment you go into the smart select two you will have a different configuration so when you want to play around with different input modes and each different input modes need to have different individual settings for audio video or any other options that will be mapped forever to this so for instance i'll give you a very very small example let's say i've got two input sources one is apple tv second is a zidu media player now the zidu media player will typically have the best volume levels but the ott streaming with apple tv will have a little lower volume level so what i'm generally facing as a problem right now is when i put my volume level at 70 db with my zidu i get the perfect level but with my apple tv i have to again increase it all the way up to 75 or 80 to match it with the level of zidu so what i do with this smart select is i assign the audio levels at a certain standard and map it to my zidu input similarly for the apple tv i set the source db level 5 db higher and map it to the apple tv so next time i do the quick select it will automatically have the internal adjustments done and i don't have to redo them again and again and by doing this i don't have to worry about sound suddenly blowing up or the sound suddenly reducing down now with all of this complicated but yet important hidden settings i'm sure you will be able to control your home theater in a much more smarter way you will be able to get the sound in the best possible way and for more such amazing information don't forget to check the virtual calibration service and to subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos thank you so much for watching i tanmay mehta your home cinema consultant or home theater wale bhaiya we'll see you again in the next video thank you